Okay, so here is a electric circuit problem that I made. Um, so the question says, so I have a five volt battery, 20 ohm, 10 ohm, 20 ohm resistors. And the question is, okay, what's the, what's the, circ, what's the electric current and direction in each branch? So there's actually three branches. A branch would be uh, where a wire goes and doesn't connect to, uh, doesn't split. So this whole thing is a branch, that's a branch, and that's a branch. Or this actually, okay. Okay. So the first thing we need to do, I have a battery, I have some resistors, is to pick the variables for the current. And you don't have to be correct here, but we need to pick something. So I'm going to say that's the positive end of the battery. So I'm going to say the conventional current comes out of here, and I'll call that I1. It comes down through here, and then I'm going to say this is I2, and this is I3. And you can call this R1, R2, R3, but we'll just, we can just use 10, 20, and 20. It doesn't really matter. So now we have two rules that we can apply. The first is the loop rule. The loop rule says that the change in electric potential around any loop is zero. And then the junction rule uh, says that the current coming in equals the current coming out. I in equals I out. Okay, so we're gonna get, we need to get three equations since I have three variables. I need three equations to solve this problem. So let's just start with our junction rule because here is a junction and here's a junction. So right here I have the current I1 coming in and then I2 and I3 coming out. So there's one equation. Now I can't do this junction over here. It would give me the same thing, right? Because this would just say the current coming in is I2 plus I3 and I1 is coming out, which is algebraically the same thing. So now I need two loops. I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to go around the big loop. And so if I do that, let's add up the voltages. I'm going to write that equation down here, and then I'll move these to another page to solve it. So right here, I go across that, I get 5 volts. I'll, see, I'll leave off the units. Next, I come down here, and I go across this resistor. I'm going in the same direction as the electric current. So it's going to be an electric potential drop. It's going to be a negative drop in potential. It's going to be minus I1 R1. That's the voltage drop across that resistor. Now I keep going this way. I'm going to drop across that. It's going to be minus I3 R3. And then I get back to there, and so it has to be equal to 0. OK, now we need to do another loop. So there's actually three loops here, and you can do two of them. Here are the three loops. 1, 2, and 3. And it doesn't matter which order you go in. I'm going to do this loop right here. I'm going to start right here. I'm going to go that way, just for funds. OK, so if I go this way, I'm going against the current. So I'm going to have a positive voltage drop across this. It's going to be I2, R2. Now I'm going over here, going with I3. So it's going to be minus I3, R3 equals zero. So now I have one, two, three equations, three variables. Now we get to solve. So let me just write these three equations again. So I have uh, move my paper. I1 equals I2 plus I3. And then I have five minus I1 R1 minus I3 R3 equals 0. I probably should have put EMF for this, but I don't know why I mixed numbers and letters. Um, I don't know what to say. I have no excuse. I2 R2 minus I3 R3 equals 0. So you may be tempted to say, hey, if I do this like weird multiplication and adding equations, I can get things to work. And that works. But you'll get into some situations solving equations in the future that it's not going to work. So I just recommend not doing that. I recommend solving for a variable and substituting in for variables. So let's do, let's start with this one since it's got only two variables in it. I'm going to solve this for I2. So I'm going to say, I'm going to add I3, R3 to both sides. And so I get I2, R2. I get plus I3 minus I3, R3. So those two cancel. And then I get equals I3, R3, divide both sides by R2. And I, yes, I'm doing every little step, at least part of it. 
I2 is equal to I3 times R3 over R2. Okay, so now I don't need this equation any, I'm sorry, yeah, I don't need this equation anymore. And I'm going to take this and put it in there. I'm going to take it and put it in here. So in here, instead of I2, I'm going to write this. Here, instead of, that one doesn't have an I2. Hmm. If I substitute that one for I, let's solve this one for I1 and put it in up here too. Let's do that. You could do it either way. Okay. So I'm going to take this one and solve for I1. And then I'll, up here, I'll substitute in I1 and I2 and get an equation with this I3. Okay, so if I solve this one for I1, I'm going to add I1, R1 to both sides, and I get 5 minus I3, R3 equals I1, R1. Now I'm going to divide both sides by R1, and I get 5 over R1 minus I3, R3 over R1 equals I1. So now I'm going to put, I'm going to rewrite this equation. So I'm going to, instead of I1, I'm going to put this. So 5 over R1 minus I3 R3 over R1 equals I2, which is this, I3 times R3 over R2. That's it. And then I have plus I3. So I want to get all the I's on one side. So I'm going to add this to both sides. I get 5 over R1 equals I3 times, I'm going to go ahead and factor it out. That would be plus to each side. So I'm going to have R3 over R1, R3 plus R3 over R2, plus 1. And then I this is just a number, right? So I can divide, I, I have it, I have I3. I3 is going to be equal to 5 over R1 times R3 over R1 plus R3 over R2 plus 1. So I can put these numbers in. 5 over 20 times 20 over 10. So 20 over 10 is 2 plus R3 over R2. Wait, R1 was 20. This is 1. 1 2 plus 1. So it's going to be, that's uh, 4. So it's going to be 5 over 80. So it's going to be 1 over, on my mind, so 5 times 20 is 100. What's 5 going to 80? 4. I'm drawing a blank here. 16? 16. 16. Is it 16? Yes. I feel dumb. Sometimes you just, sometimes you just, your mind draws a blank, right? So I'm going to just double check. So 5 enter 80 divided by, so point, that is, so 1 enter 16 divided by. Yep. Okay, I was right. So that's I3 amps. Okay. Now I can go back. I have I3. I can find I2. So I2 is equal to I3, which is 1 16th, times R3, which is 20, divided by R2, which is 10. So I get 1 8th amp. Now I can go up here and find I1. I1 is going to be 1 8th plus 1 16th is going to be equal to 3 16th amps. Done. So, I mean, let's, let's talk for a second, right? Because if you were doing a test and you made a mistake over here. Oh, also, I should say that all these are positive values such that that means my directions I picked were the correct. If I got a negative value for one of these, that's fine. It just means the direction's opposite way. You could easily make a mistake here because there's a lot of work going on, okay? But if, if you're doing this problem and you put, and you say loop rule, junction rule, and you even say that's the junction rule, these are loop rules, and you put those things down, I mean, that's, that's the physics, right? This is the math. I want you to be able to see the difference between those two because it is important, okay? Uh, 
the math is important, just like grammar is important when you're writing an essay for history. But but it's really the history that you're aiming for. You may get points off for the grammar and for things like that. Uh, and, and the same thing through here, but, but this is worth more than that, at least in my class. Okay, so there's a circuit problem.